Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, and it seems like IGN released the final preview for Rise of the Ronin, which I don't actually believe because we're supposed to get a part four, it's called Rise as One. It's another deep dive with the devs, but we're going to check this uh, trailer out, and we're going to be reacting to it together, so come with me. And while you're here, if you could just hit subscribe, that would be fantastic. Rise of the all right final preview okay there's a few new th um nothing really new here except for this meter no we've had that meter before this is new i think this is our health bar and this is our posture meter first time seeing these is this like a capture the flag thing hmm interesting <laughs> Rise of the Ronin has been a blast so far. While not a graphical stunner like Ghost of Tsushima, I have been very impressed with the depth and sheer number of things to do. The story is compelling and gives you motivation to keep going. The story is compelling and gives you motivation to keep going to see what's next. There's plenty of gear you can acquire to make a stronger build. Characters you meet during your journey will join your crew and fight alongside you. There's a transmogrification system that lets you customize your appearance while also having the best gear possible equipped, and you can pet cats. But more importantly than all that, <laughs> the core gameplay felt like a mix. What was that? Can we just that. replay the that? Core gameplay oh, okay, so if you deflect a fire arrow, your blade will actually catch fire. Let's watch that one more time. Modification system Look at that. that lets you customize your appearance while also having the best gear possible equipped, and you can pet cats. But more importantly than all that, the boom. That the boom. Look, fire arrow, blades not on fire. Gameplay blade felt is on like fire. a mix of the storytelling and Pretty exploration cool. in Assassin's Creed 2 with a smidgen of Ninja Gaiden. Com and we also have obtain the camera optional defeat formidable foes. Okay, that's pretty cool. We have optional side quests. We have a bar here that I haven't seen before. I feel like this is like a capture of the base. If we, or like you maybe your troops' morales. Okay, so we still have the the horse whistle. We have the food pills. So the pills are down now, which means that you can put the items wherever you want to. They're going to be interchangeable. They're not locked. And yeah, I feel like this is the, the biggest new thing I've seen so far. Combat and a dash of Dark Souls difficulty. In other words, this recipe seems to be a perfect Was mix the of Hayabusa Game Dragon Creed 2 drop? with a smidgen of Ninja Gaiden combat and a dash of Dark Souls difficulty. In other words, this recipe seems to be a perfect mix of gameplay ingredients that I've been loving. The main storyline of Rise of Ronin is all about a duo referred to as Blade Twins. In this case, it's believed that the duo are brother and sister who nearly suffered a terrible fate at a young age as their village burned to the ground. Instead, they were saved and recruited into the Veiled Edge as Blade Twins. Highly skilled with the sword, Blade Twins train and grow together as they master their skills. One of your first tests of skill... I'm guessing like if you decide to play as a male character, you'll play as him. And if you have to play as a female character, you play as her. Because there is cu customer... Ca there is character customization. There you Has go. you infiltrating the ship of historical figure Matthew C. Perry to steal a secret message and assassinate Perry after doing so. This section does a good job of showing off a few stealth elements of Ronin and also showcases combat with the footage PlayStation sent us to use for this preview. I don't know what this bar means. This over here, I feel like this is maybe like the formidable foe they were talking about. This is probably like a lieutenant enemy or an elite enemy. Combat will require precise timing for counters, and you'll need to pay close attention to your key gauge, which is basically a stamina. Move. Okay, Getting so hit stamina, not posture. Much while blocking will deplete your key, but parrying your opponent or damaging them will result in a loss of their key. Deplete all their key, and they'll be left open for a devastating attack. The back and forth is a lot of fun in practice, but it's not easy to hit that perfect timing. 
Each encounter also allows you the opportunity to use stealth to infiltrate an area, and you can take out a few enemies without being seen. But in almost every situation, there will be higher powered foes that will require you to know the combat basics to defeat them and move forward. So while I built a character with a speech trait that opened up some unique dialogue options for me. A speech trait, that's pretty cool. Okay, that's, that's, that's new information right over here, speech trait. So it seems like they really wanna build the RPG aspect and like, I guess you could play as a bard in a, some type of way, but more like a charismatic samurai more than anything else. There's no escaping those necessary combat beats that Ronin does quite well. Okay, interesting. The um, the stealth attack didn't kill the enemy and then the female character decided to jump in afterwards. Does this mean that if you're by yourself and you don't do enough damage that you won't be able to one-shot certain enemies? Or you can one-shot certain enemies only if you're two people or more? All the practice has paid off. What? Don't move! After this introduction, okay, so this dude has one bar over here, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that the bars over here is like their rank to see like if they're a regular enemy, formidable foe, things of that nature. What? Don't move. After this introductory section, Roman really opens up. Our preview window promised two hours of playable weapon. content, but it turned out it was much more than that. We were given access to a large open world that included countryside towns and open fields, as well as city spaces with different types of missions located at each. In these sections, you can choose to take on story quests, side quests, customize. Ooh, we have new items. We have a camera. I'm guessing this is for photo mode. And we have more pills and a conch. I can't really tell what this is, but probably like a key booster or a stamina booster or something like that. Definitely be definitely a uh, consumable as your longhouse or play mini games alongside other activities I probably missed. The provided footage we're allowed to use in this preview does a good job of showcasing a smattering of options available to players. Okay, but even so we have a couple of mini games available to us. I'm not a huge. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of mini games in my games. <laughs> I kind of just want to play the game, but I, there is a little something for everyone, which is pretty nice. And this feels like it's just a glimpse into what's available, as I haven't even played some of what you're seeing yet. One notable mission in the footage was a story beat where I fought alongside the eccentric Ronin to gain his allegiance in one of the battle missions. In our preview, battle missions allow us to gain ally allegiance as part of core story missions. These are fun excursions that have bonus objectives like defeat three formidable foes. Was that a in character our preview, switch? Battle missions allow us to gain ally. Was that a character switch, or was it like you're calling on your ally to do something for allegiance you? Allegiance as part of core story missions. There, look like the camera switches over to this side, as if you're playing as him. But I think that could just be like. Uh, you're calling in your allies ability. These are fun excursions that have bonus objectives like defeat three formidable foes and will have an impact on the overall story you wind up experiencing. The main objective in this case was to defeat Gonzo and decide his fate before looting some forged documents that would complete the quest. I could have murdered him right there, but I instead chose to spare Gonzo. Fast forward to the open world section, and I meet a character in the middle of nowhere asking me to deal with a person who swindled him out of money. Who did it turn out to be? None other than Gonzo, who was getting well, into trouble. Well, god damn it. Gonzo, I just saved you. And even after I spared him earlier. This time, I can finish him for real or have him join my crew. Had I chosen to kill him off, I would have been rewarded with some loot, but if I didn't, I got an extra helper to fight beside me in the open world. I'll take that over a few trinkets any day. And I discovered these different outcomes because I reloaded my save just to see what would happen had I chosen the other option. Okay, we have a couple of more things over here. Mm. We have stance switches. Okay, so this has double arrow down, double arrow up, and this is arrow up, arrow down, which means if you use this stance against this enemy, you'll do, I guess, regular amount of damage or this stance is equal. 
this one you would have a harder time fighting the enemy and this stance will actually give you an advantage against this guy which is the chinese style i i stand corrected i found out that the stances are not really like high medium low it completely changes your combat style in one of like the pre-order editions you can actually get the hayabusa style so i'm really looking forward to seeing that and we also have a different item over here which is a st uh, stopwatch a clock and the food pill the medicine pill item there's more pills in this so this is probably like your medium potion instead of your small potion oh wait is this like enemy ally so you have your one two allies three allies and then the enemy also has an ally you can see as well and while i had really been having fun with rise of the ronin up until this oh, point no, that's just the enemy's health this was the moment that really solidified how much i was liking this game great combat an intriguing story decisions that matter tons of stuff to do and you can pet cats i'm sold minus e look at the uh did you, see, did you guys see the feathering? Can I slow it down? Let me slow down the speed real quick. Pet cats, I'm sold. Look, bam, feathering. My decision to spare Gonzo would pay off too because in my upcoming story mission fight with Kira, I now had three allies going into battle instead of just two. Is that a Myself, smoke weapon? the eccentric Ronin, and Gonzo were an unstoppable trio ready to take Kira down. And that's just in the opening missions. I am tremendously excited to see who else I can recruit into my group. These were the core missions that we got to experience in our preview, but there's a lot more to do. While running in the open world, you might come upon towns that are overrun with troublemakers that you'll need to dispatch to restore order. There are many games like the Gatling Gun Firearm Range that was teased in the footage Sony sent over, or the Glider mini games that challenge you to break all the targets floating in the sky. And while they didn't show much of it in the video that we're allowed to use, there's an entire gear system at play that encourages you to learn different weapons and use tools like the sub-weapon class that includes things like throwing stars, rifles, bows, and more for combat to get a leg up in battle. That's in addition to your main weapons. So, so far we've seen poison, fire, lightning, and now smoke attributes on weapons. Interesting. By the way, which have a smattering of samurai classics. Rise of the Ronin is poised to give players a lot to dive into. And while it doesn't quite live up to PlayStation's first party open world exclusives in the graphics department, the developers at Team Ninja have focused on what's important an engaging story that has a great hook to keep you exploring, a fun gameplay system that will keep you striving to perfect your skills, and all of that is found alongside a smattering of fun activities to challenge yourself with. I can't wait to see how it all comes together when Ronin launches later this month. For more right. on the latest- Very exciting, I'm super excited for the game. One thing I'd like to uh, take note of is how he said, the game doesn't doesn't really match up when it comes to Sony's first party titles when it comes to the graphical department, which I 100% agree that feathering on the cat, insane that, that, that they have that this close to launch. However, they're focusing on what people actually care about, which is gameplay. I'm, I'm so tired of Sony first party studios having beautiful games, uh, beautiful, beautiful graphics, and then being like 15 hours long or having like these really, really long, intense walking sections because like you need the other side of the game to render or, or whatever. Like I'm just, I'm tired of first party studios putting graphics over gameplay, which I'll discuss in another video, another time. With that being said, I'm gonna bring the video to a close. I'm super excited for Rise of the Ronin. Every single day we get closer. I, and my excitement just becomes more and more palpable. Are you guys excited? Let me know in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And also, I have a goal of hitting 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year. I literally cannot do it without your help. If you could do it, that'd be fantastic. And if you don't want to, well, remember, at the end of the day, I'm just some guy on the internet, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.